in the blood. Mm. You going over here or you going up front? I'll go up front, I guess. Uh. 132. 132. Would you be free from the burden of sin? Are they 
we thank you, Lord, for each one that has taken advantage of that privilege to come. We pray, Father, for your guidance in our service this morning. We pray that all that we do might glorify the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to be with us during our fellowship and during our song service this afternoon. I pray, Father, that uh, we might find favor in your sight. I pray, Father, for those that are sick, those that are traveling. I pray you give them travel mercies and watch over them, touch them, and heal them. We know, Lord, that you're able to take care of every need that they'll have, and we'd ask you, Lord, that they might look to you for protection and comfort that they need. We pray, Father, for your guidance in all that we do. We pray you'd bless our church. Help us to be a light in the community. And Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We ask you, Lord, to be with the situation there that you would soon bring it to a close. We'd ask you, Lord, to guide us and watch over us in all things. Bless our country, Lord, again. Help us to be drawn back to you. Guide us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good, Good morning. morning. <laughs> You're happy to be here on this gorgeous Lord's Day. Say amen. 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 Sunday's the best day of the week because we get to go to the Lord's house, right? So anyway, the sun is shining. It's the I just want to know that this is me. <laughs> yes, I'm cold, 24-7. <laughs> I got that from Janet's reading. Just made my day. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's good to be here. And uh, do we have any visitors in my home? We have two visitors. Stand up and hey, come. Come, come, come. <laughs> This is my son, Stephen, his wife, Shannon, and his cute, precious little daughter. We are so glad you came. And be sure y'all stay for food afterwards. Yeah. So, and, she, and she talks about y'all all the time. <laughs> but it's all good stuff. So anyway, it's good seeing everybody today. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. So, <laughs> did you have one? I had fun. Okay. Uh, before I forget, which I usually do, I want to tell you there is an angel out there in ATB over here on Southeast Military Drive. I'm standing in line to pay for my groceries. I got to talk to you. <coughs> you know me and Papa. I got to talking to this lady behind me. And she looked at me and she, I know that she was looking at my stuff. Can I pay for your groceries? Oh, I was dumbfounded. I didn't know what to say. So I said, are you sure? She said, yes. So the Lord's going to bless that angel. And she said they do it all the time for the elderly. And I said, <laughs> so I tell you, I just have old kids and they have old kids. My kids are old because they're grandparents. <laughs> Somebody asked me about that. And I, well, what about you? And I said, I'm really happy for them. So, you know, I don't consider myself old. Anyhow, okay, listen, if y'all have songs you want us to sing, you got to tell Edna and Dorothy, and they'll write them down in the book, which is not here, but they'll write them down. So uh, just let them know. And today in Sunday school, we had 18. 19? 19. 19. Oh, yes, it was 19, so we almost made 20. So anyway, uh, uh, Bubba is our Sunday school teacher, so... If we don't know what he's talking about, we ask. So, uh, anyway, we have a board of concern over there. If you know someone who is ill or having problems for whatever reason, we just put their name on the board and pray for them each and every day. And there are so many up there that need our prayers. So, so if you know of someone, let them know. So, okay. Well, Wednesday, uh, oh, you know what today is? Today is Sunday, the last Sunday of the month, and we get to eat. I don't know about y'all, but I starved myself all, all month long, so I can eat on the last Sunday. So uh, anyway, that's, we're going to have our services here, and then after the services, we'll go to 
Thermic should fall in and have to lunch. And then after everybody gets full, and we come over here and sing. Work it out. Work it out. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's, that's what today is. And then, uh, so our Sunday evening service is having church all day long. So is um, anybody having any birthdays? Anybody getting younger? Huh? Okay, how about anniversaries? None? Okay, we got a Christmas card from Barbara Wilson. She uh, was a member of the church until she moved to Peoria, Illinois. But she wants to come back home. So anyway, this is a wish that every heart knows the true spirit of Christmas and a wish for peace and joy and goodwill to all. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, your friend in Christ, Barbara. And she says, hi, everybody. I sure do miss all of you guys. Hopefully, I'll be able to find a house and move back there next year. So it, it'd be nice having a Barbara back in our church. So there's no place like our church. So anyway. I guess I'm done. I'm done. It's your turn. It's your turn. <laughs> Somebody's turn. Okay, if you will, please turn to hymn number 411. 411. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus.
Now we live in a world of violence and hate and disappointments and everything. And, uh, so that's, uh, we're living in a such a violent environment. I thought that uh, maybe I ought to talk to you a little bit this morning about love. things that we say that 
I love the way your hair is this morning. No, I like the way you've got your hair this morning. I love your tie. No, I like your tie. I love my car. No, I don't love my car. I like the car. But I don't love it. You see, love is something that comes not surface, but from the heart. And God's love comes from the heart. He says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. In other words, God's love is such a love that it has no end. And what is love? Well, love is caring about someone else more than you care about or as much as you care about yourself. I don't think any of us care more about somebody else than we do ourselves. Maybe we, we should try. Because God cared and cares about us. He loves us. I don't know why. He loves us even though we are unlovely. Uh, give an idea of love. I remember some friends that we had at one time, they're gone now. But the wife made a comment one time that I had a little trouble understanding exactly what she meant, but I figured it out since then. She says, I love George. That was her husband. She says, but I don't like him. <laughs> I love my husband but I don't like you. In other words, it was not that she wanted anything bad. She just didn't like a lot of the things that he did. Well, God loves us, but sometimes he doesn't like us. Sometimes we are out of God's will. We are <coughs> doing our own thing, trying to live our own life the way we want to live it, rather than looking to God for the guidance that we need to live it the way we ought to. We look over into Romans, <coughs> the fifth chapter and the eighth verse. I can find it here. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. <clears throat> this is what love is. It's able to care about somebody's welfare, to care about their needs, to be concerned about them, even if they don't care about themselves. We need, love does not demand anything. Love is a giving attribute that we have that we only get from God. <clears throat> Before I was saved, I was number one on my list. Everybody else was secondary. Until I found Christ, until Christ found me. And then my life changed. And if you have found Christ, your life has changed. You saw it because without God in our lives, we cannot know love. We cannot love without Christ in our lives. The problem of the world today is, well, the vast majority of people don't have Christ in their lives. They have not been touched by the hand of God to convert them to change them to where they can love. They hate. We see it on our streets every day. We see it all kinds of violence everywhere we look. Why? Because people hate. They are disappointed. They're disillusioned. They're angry. And they don't care who they hurt. They don't have any compassion on anyone because they do not have the love of God in their lives. They don't have God. They don't have that love. If we are going to be God's children and 
performance got to, we've got to quit thinking so much about me and start thinking about others. We need to look at the needs around us. We need to have compassion on those that are hurting. And there are so many today that are hurting. We need to care. We need to be concerned. We're finishing out the last Sunday of the year today. We're going to have a good meal after I get through preaching. We're going to go over and fellowship together and then we're going to come back and we're going to sing praises to the Lord. But we need to remember that uh, there are a lot of people out there that uh, don't have the Lord. They don't have uh, a meal. They don't have shelter. We can look across the ocean a ways at the war toward the zone and over there and see the hurt of the misery that's going on and we should be moved with compassion for them. We should care. I don't know those people, but God does. And God knows that they're hurting and I know that they're hurting and it grieves me. Why? Because I care. That's the thing. We need to care. We need especially to care for one another, for the family of God, for our fellow Christians, for our fellow members, for those that are a part of our close family. We need to care about them. We need to love them. You know I have to like everything I do, but I want you to love me. I want you to be concerned for my welfare. I want you to be concerned for how I'm doing. Uh, you know, it was, uh, that's love, that's God. Caring about somebody else more than or as much as you care about yourself. Trying to do the things that will lift somebody else. I'm having maybe a little trouble trying to really get across the love of God. Because God's love does not depend on whether or not we are good or bad or indifferent. It, it's, it's there. God loves us even though we don't love Him back sometimes. Even though we don't do a thing for Him, He still loves us. Of course, He may not like us, but He loves us. His love does not change. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. His love does not change. We might go out into eternity forever lost, but that's not because God wants us to. It's because God allows us to. We have the right to choose our final destination. God is not going to force us to love Him, but God begs us to love Him. He pleads with us to love Him, to care for Him, to be concerned about him, to be concerned about one another, to lift one another up, to be touched by the needs around us. Uh, are you touched? Do you care? Does it matter to you what happens to your neighbors, to your friends, to your family? As long as it doesn't touch you, it doesn't matter. There are a lot of people that way. As long as it doesn't touch me personally, it doesn't matter. I should care about others as much as I do myself. Uh, we're going to change the verses here to... Uh, uh, cedar allergy is kind of... blighted me today. Third chapter of Ephesians. And we're going to look at about the, well, let's start about 17, the third chapter of Ephesians. He says here, Uh, 
that's correct. So the Christ, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. But you may know, you see, Paul's desire for the Ephesians in this letter, and it's for all of them, is that they might know how much Christ loves them. And we need to think about that. The love that brought him to the earth. God looked down upon man, you and I, everybody else. And he saw that we were lost and doomed without hope in the world. We had nothing to look forward to. We were doomed. We had already been weighed and found wanting. We had already been condemned. But God's love for us was such that he was willing <coughs> to find a way that we might be reconciled to Him. This is what God wanted. He wants us to be reconciled. He says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. I don't enjoy watching you go out into eternity forever lost. But that's your privilege. But because of His great love, He was willing to send His Son into the world. <coughs> that we might have forgiveness of our transgressions and be reconciled to God. Jesus came that he might be crucified. He was born to be sacrificed for us. He didn't have to go. He could have chosen to say, well, they're not worthy, but he did it right. We weren't worthy. We were not worthy. But because of his great love for us, Christ was willing to bear the shame and the reproach and the pain and the agony of the cross of Calvary that he might give us an opportunity to have everlasting life, that we might be made whole because of his willingness and his love for us. I can't hardly fathom that great love a love so great that he is willing to leave the splendor of heaven to come and be born in a manger. We just celebrated that. And to grow, walk upon the earth for 33 years and then die on the cross to pay the price for our transgressions. Why? Because of love. He wasn't, he wasn't nailed on that cross. He was hung there by love. His love for us. They say he could have called, he said he could have called 10,000 legions of angels. He could have called 10,000 angels and destroyed the world. But he said, I love them. I want them to be saved. I want to give them this opportunity to have life. Christ loves us. God loves us. And we need to love one another. We need to love God. We need to love Christ. Uh, I love each one of you. Some of you do things sometimes that aggravate me and I don't like. But I love you. Because the love of God is in my heart. God's love. If you don't have God's love, you can't love anybody else. I love because I am loved, and I know it. I know God loves me. I know He cares, and He cares for you. He cares about you. He is concerned about your welfare. He wants you to have everlasting life. He wants you to have 
all of the good things that he has in store for you. We see so much sorrow and sadness and sickness and hate and violence in the world today. Why? Because sin is running rapid in this world today. Not, it's because God has allowed it, but God says it's not going to continue forever. And the day is coming when God is going to say that is sufficient. You have filled up your cup of wickedness and he's going to call us all home that are saved and destroy the world. It's going to happen. He said so. And we need to be prepared for that day and so we're not going to be here. Let's look over at First John for a little while. About the third chapter. First John. Lots of things here that I like to do. Actually, first John is the book of the world, sort of. Uh, first John, the third chapter. Now we start with the first verse. It says, Behold. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. What matters? Called the sons of God. We are called that because of God's love. Let's drop down a little further here in the 23rd verse of the same chapter. Uh, the third verse is, says that this is a commandment, is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandments. You notice know, that it says we need to believe on Jesus. We need to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We need to believe that God sent him to be a propitiation for our sins, that he sent him to bear our burdens on the cross of Calvary. And then we need, he says, to love one another. Love one another. How are you going to love one another? if you don't have the love of God. And he says if you don't love your brother, you can't love God. If we can't love one another, we can't love God. We need to have love for one another. We need to love. And so Jesus came that we might have love and life and liberty and happiness and life. In the fourth chapter, first John, starting at about verse 15, he says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath for us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. <coughs> if you've got God in your heart, you have love. And you can love one another. You can be concerned. You can be moved. You care. And if you don't care, you don't have the love of God in you. Where do you stand today? Do you have the love of God in you? Do you care about others? Are you concerned about the needs about you? You see, love doesn't demand anything in return. Love is giving. Love is willing to give without necessarily having anything come in return. God loves us whether we return us love or not. He loves us whether we do anything for him or not. Of course, we're going to have to pay the penalty if we don't uh, accept it. We're going to have to uh, spend eternity separated from him. But that doesn't keep him from loving us. And we need to love one another. Do you love one another? Do you love God? Is the love of God flowing through your lives? 
I don't know what it is or not. The 16th verse in there says that, says that we have known and believed the love that God has to us. Do you know it? Do you believe it? It says, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. Where are you living today? Are you living in God? Are you trusting in Him? Are you loving Him and praising Him and thanking Him for so many blessings? All the good things we have, the Bible says, come down from God. All the good things that we have. And God says He wants to bless us. He wants us to have good things. He wants us to have everlasting life. He wants us to turn away from our sins and turn to God and believe that Jesus died for us. He wants us to accept His love and to let it flow through us. Uh, you know how the Dead Sea is? It's a Dead Sea because apparently it has no outlet. The water flows into it. There's no life in the Dead Sea. How many people around today are like the Dead Sea? They let the blessings flow into them, but they don't let them flow out. You see, the love of God needs to flow through us. It doesn't need to flow into us and stagnate there. We need to let it flow. It's a stream that flows through us. It's a continuous stream. There's no end to supply. So there's no reason why we shouldn't let it go right on through us and share our love and God's love with others. God is love. Do you love God? Are you saved today? Have you accepted that love? Have you let Jesus come into your heart and give you freedom from sin and hope of eternity and a relationship with God? I don't know whether you have or not. Okay. God loves us. Whether we love Him or not. It's not a demanding love. It's a love that He offers us freely. We can accept it or we can reject it. It's up to us. It's up to you. God loves sinners. Just like us, and he wants to forgive us. If you will receive Jesus and invite him into your heart and accept the love of God and let it flow through you, your lives will be so much happier, better, and more productive. I can't do it for you. I can't give it. Picture and pour love down your throat. God can if you'll let him. He'll fill you with love and compassion and joy. If you'll receive <coughs> Jesus as your Savior. Are you saved today? Are you lost? I don't know. Amen, Let's Brother Bill. Father, thank you for your love. I pray, Father, that uh, we might realize uh, the depth of your love and the strength of it and the joy of it. I pray, Father, that if there's one here that's not enjoying that relationship with you, that they might, might want to know more about you, it might come to you, it might believe that you love them. And care about it. I know, Father, that there's no one that you don't love. But there's a lot of us you don't like. I pray, Father, help us to change that. And be one that you like as well as love. Can we ask you in Jesus' name? Instead of doing it, you say. Please turn to him number 294. Have thy own way, Lord. May we all in this year, turning our lives over to God, coming closer, let him have his way with us. <laughs>